Good evening and welcome to the Week in 30 Minutes. The English News Department has prepared the highlights of the main events that have recently been held throughout Kuwait. Our committed team of correspondents kept busy on the streets of Kuwait covering a variety of reports on health, education, business, technology, the environment, culture and arts, as well as other issues that are currently trending. Today's episode hosts a number of stories intended to keep you informed and engaged with the local scene. Today's program will take us to the UN headquarters in Mishrif, where the UN representative to Kuwait will tell us about the occasion of the United Nations Day, which is commemorated annually on the 24th of October around the globe. Another event witnessed the Kuwaiti Association for Learning Differences, as they hosted an award ceremony for teachers. More reports are coming your way, so let's begin. From the Sahara Golf Club, this is Sahara Club. From the Radisson Blue, I'm Gemma Jaburi. From the Sahara Club, this is Salim Kandiri. From the Scientific Center, this is Heba Abdurrahman. I'm Badria Saleh, reporting for The Week in 30 Minutes. Our first report today comes from correspondent Sarah Glubb, who will take us through the celebration that took place in honor of teachers who endeavor to support children's learning and growth. The Kuwaiti Association for Learning Differences, the CALD, organized the ceremony to celebrate the Distinguished Teachers Award for 2014. The ceremony is to recognize the efforts and capabilities of teachers who work together towards helping students with learning differences in private schools in Kuwait. CALD is a social welfare association that works towards helping students with learning differences in private schools throughout the city of Kuwait. Let's watch. Under the patronage of His Highness the Emir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, Kuwaiti Association for Learning Differences, or CALD, held its annual Distinguished Teachers Award 2014 ceremony to honor three teachers for their overall efforts in the education sector. It was honored that I uh, participate in the uh, ceremony for uh, uh, CALD uh, for the uh, teacher that. Uh, who is helping uh, special needs. Uh, I was proud that I, uh, I be with the, all, all the uh, actually uh, private sector or uh, the government who was helping from one year they are working on this uh, ceremony uh, uh, to help the kids to take their better, uh, uh, better uh, learning. Uh, Always I, uh, I, I'd like to attend these ceremonies because uh, I need, um, uh, uh, I, they need support from the government and we are supporting them. Uh, uh, hopefully I, I see more uh, ceremonies and uh, success uh, from the NGOs. Today we say that our dream came true. Now uh, we are hoping that uh, in the future more and more teachers will participate in CALD award for the distinguished teachers and we are uh, uh, very uh, impressed with the teachers who participated in uh, this award and uh, we thank from your uh, uh, network we thank all the uh, schools that open their doors for us and encourage their teachers to participate we thank the ministry of education the private education uh, department for uh, encouraging us to do such an uh, interesting project and also we thank the uh, the ministry of uh, foreign affairs for uh, uh, supporting the NGOs and also the uh, UNDB for believing in that the uh, NGOs can make a difference in developing Kuwait, especially the education. After the supervising committee reviewed and evaluated the applications based on international criteria, they nominated five teachers from Manarat School, Dasman Model School, Al Ma'rifa School, Fawziya Sultan International School, and Universal American School. Well, actually, for this award, this is a unique project done by Khal, supported by the Amir of this country. And we know at Khal there are women who are really well educated and 
they always volunteer for the, to provide the best for our children with the special needs. I think this is the first time not only in, in the Gulf, but also in the Arab world, to really recognize teachers in this field. Uh, it means a lot to me. I've been teaching in this field for the past 23 years. It was a big journey for me and you can not, never say that you are fine, you are a good teacher, because to be a good teacher means it's a process of an ongoing assessment, self-assessment. It's the relief of the kids that they, you need to work hard to let them shine. The called Distinguished Teachers Award is a yearly award that is granted to teachers who exemplify the highest standards in teaching students with learning difficulties and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Kuwait Association for Learning Differences has successfully concluded their first annual Distinguished Teachers Award ceremony that was held for the first time in the Gulf region and the Arab world to honor teachers and schools for their unique and invaluable work. From the Sheikha Salwa Sabah Hall in Salmiya, this is Sarah Club reporting for the Week in 30 Minutes. <laughs>Since 1964, the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, enjoys a long history of partnership with Kuwait in support of the national development vision and goals. United Nations Day, which is celebrated globally on the 24th of October, is an occasion to highlight, celebrate and reflect on the worlds of the United Nations and its family of specialized agencies. UNDP Kuwait's theme for this year's celebration is celebrating the youth and humanitarian efforts of Kuwait. UN Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative Dr. Mubashir Sheikh conve conveyed a message through an exclusive interview with, at the UN House with our correspondent, Ghanwa Jabouri. Let's take a watch. The UN and its family have been achieving phenomenal targets globally where peace and security are among the countless humanitarian initiatives that the UN and its organisations embrace. United Nations Day is devoted to making known to peoples of the world the aims and achievements of the United Nations organisations. I think you just uh, sort of reminded the, the community, the world community, that we are living in very difficult times. We are living in very challenging times. And we're, we're living in a time which is very unpredictable. And we're living in a time where you never know uh, what's going to happen tomorrow, but more importantly, where we can have multiple challenges at the same time. And it, to a certain extent, I think that also, in a way, justifies the role and the contribution and the mandate of the United Nations, you know, because this is the only global organization or entity which has the mandate to bring all countries of the world together in, on, on one platform to deal with the number of issues, the number of challenges, what you just referred to. Right now, the global community is facing Ebola, actually, as one of the major public health problems. But let's not forget, we also have a number of other conflicts, a number of other crises, a number of other developmental challenges, you know. Representative Dr. Mubashar Sheikh spoke candidly about the UN's global leadership in humanitarian initiatives. He spoke about the youth and the importance of supporting their aspirations who hold the future in their hands, among other topics. UNDP Kuwait's theme for this year's celebration is celebrating the youth and humanitarian efforts of Kuwait. We believe the United Nations Day during this year, which is the 69 years of this and 69th anniversary of the United Nations since it came into existence, is reminding about all these bigger challenges but also why we need also to come together and to celebrate and recognize not only the United Nations as a system, but these thousands and thousands and thousands of United Nations staff who are working out there in the field in very difficult situations and trying to help those suffering communities uh, to make, the, make sure that they have the right kind of support, the right kind of tools, the right kind of services in place so that they have a better quality of life. Some of the key milestones achieved over the years by UNDP Kuwait include facilitating the establishment of the Women's Research and Studies Centre in cooperation with the University of Kuwait, 
establishing the Kuwait Integrated Environment Information Network to enable the Kuwait Environment Protection Authority. Launching for the first time ever in the Arab region, a junior program officers IPO initiative to enhance the capacities of young Kuwaitis, to name just a few. This year, we have specifically picked a theme in, the, in Kuwait, really, uh, looking at the youth and the humanitarian efforts of this, con uh, this country. And, and specifically, the theme is celebrating the youth and humanitarian efforts of Kuwait. And, and, and it, there's a specific reason behind it. Let me start by saying youth, you know, why we are focusing on youth. This country's population is 60% uh, comprised of young people. So they are the real source, they, they are real strength of the society. But, and they are, some of them are doing a wonderful job, really. But there is so much potential, and there's so much to be done to mainstream them, to harness their efforts, to encourage them. And, and, and that's why we thought it is very, very critical to sort of focus on the young people, to give them the right kind of the platform, the recognition, but also encourage them, motivate them. And I'm really grateful to the Ministry of State of Youth and especially His Excellency, the Minister of State of uh, Youth, you know, Mr. Sheikh Salman al sawa who has been a real champion for the cause. He is really standing up. He has so much, you know, to offer, you know, and he's trying to do so much. And I'm so glad that we are a partner, we are a supporter of what he's trying to do uh, and under the vision of His Highness the Amir, you know, who has really put the youth at the top of the, his vision, really. UN is commemorated on the 24th of October globally. This year, UN Kuwait is celebrating and honouring the youth and Kuwait for its humanitarian work. From the UN House located in Mishrif, I'm Geno Jaburi reporting to you for the week in 30 minutes. <laughs>
and the defeat of Hitler's first coup in 1923. But the 3rd of October, 1990, the day of the formal reunification, was chosen instead, thus replacing the Day of German Unity on the 17th of June, the national holiday of the Federal Republic of Germany, from 1954. This is for us a very special day. We celebrate uh, 50 years of diplomatic relation with Kuwait. We are also celebrating 25 years of uh, unification of Germany and uh, we are very pleased that we have a lot of guests and I hope all the guests will be still here like home and enjoy the evening. When looking to the immediate future I would highlight uh, what joins us besides good economic ties and uh, the political will for freedom and liberty uh, is uh, humanitarian uh, aid, this accent uh, which is here under the leadership uh, of uh, the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness, uh, who was recently honored for good reasons by the United Nations. And uh, the focus on the hum one of the important focuses is on helping uh, the refugees from Syria. So there we certainly have uh, important projects uh, on the agenda uh, on our doorstep. Ambassador Walforth expressed his message of congratulations to his fellow countrymen and also shared his gratitude for the strong ties between Kuwait and Germany, a relationship he foresees as only becoming even stronger. At the residence of the German ambassador to Kuwait, I'm Badria Saleh, reporting for The Week in 30 Minutes. From the Sahara Golf Club, this is Sahara Club. From the Radisson Blue, I'm Gemma Jaburi. From the Sahara Club, this is Salim Kandiri. From the Scientific Center, this is Hab Abdurrahman. I'm Badria Saleh, reporting for The Week in 30 Minutes. Our next report comes from correspondent Salim Al Kandari and is entitled The 12th National Conference from Kuwait We Begin and to Kuwait We End. The conference, which is organized by a number of civil society institutions, honors a number of the founding fathers and mothers for their various contributions to Kuwait and Kuwait's people along with the history of this country. Based on Kuwaiti culture and heritage, the conference continues to aim on capitalizing on national unity for all members of society. Under the sponsorship of the Minister of Information and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Sheikh Salman Sabah al Hamoud al Sabah, the 12th edition of the National Conference took place for two days, honoring some of the founding fathers and mothers of Kuwait. It's an event about Kuwait, about being, uh, actually about belonging to Kuwait. Uh, what is Kuwait? What, to, what, what we have to do uh, for, for Kuwait? And we are doing it in an indirect way. We are uh, uh, having to uh, reward those who did the best for Kuwait, who has uh, an achievement for, for Kuwait. And we are um, rewarding them uh, by, by turning their name and their achievements uh, to the public. Actually, um, it depends. Sometimes we do it every six months and sometimes we do it every one year. So it depends about the, the people because the people who achieve are the most important things that we are, we, we are talking about. So if we have more people, uh, those who have achieve, achievements, we will do it. It's about the people who did a lot of things for Kuwait. The great people like our prince here, Mut'ab uh, Al-Atman Saeed. All right, and it's about them. We're going to talk about the good things that they did for Kuwait. We, we are being proud okay, to talk about the history, about the good things, about the people who did good things for Kuwait here. That's why we want to talk about that, to feel proud. We want to tell the people what they did and to, to let them know about the history. The conference included various activities and presentations that aim to promote loyalty and fulfill the values of Kuwait and publishes the meanings of moderation and consolidate the established national values and support youth projects and contribute to achieving the vision and objectives of the state in promoting unity. Kuwait's 12th National Conference was held for those two days in honor of Kuwait and also in appreciation of among the founding fathers and the founding mothers who put their hands together for unification and appreciation of Kuwait. From al Baptain Library, this is Salim Kandiri reporting for the week in 30 minutes.
The National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters, the NCCAL, hosted the Palestinian Cultural Days, which aim at sending a message from Palestine, Al-Quds, Islamic and Christian sacred places to the Kuwaiti public and the whole world. Palestinian ambassador to Kuwait said that the event was another milestone in bilateral relations with Kuwait, which date back all the way to the 1920s, adding that Palestinian embassy and the NCCAL were keen on the cultural events to be successful. Our correspondent Sarah Glubb brings us this report from the Desmond Theater. The National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters, the NWCAL, inaugurated the Palestinian Cultural Days, which kick-started with a performance by the Palestinian Doban Group. Uh, this event uh, has been arranged with the, with the National Council for um, uh, uh, about five to six months ago uh, in order to, to you know, kind of strengthening the, the uh, cultural relations between uh, Kuwait and, and uh, Palestine. And, uh, as kind of uh, also strengthening, strengthening the, the relations between uh, Kuwait and, and Palestine in, in general. Uh, this event is, is a special event, I, I, I do believe, in all its uh, 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 activities uh, that, that are going to take uh, place. Uh, as you noticed in the, in the, in the, uh, outside in the lobby of the uh, theater, that we have uh, an exhibition. And this exhibition is also not traditional Palestinian exhibition. It's uh, uh, it's uh, something new, and uh, it's a modern heritage, uh, uh, Palestinian heritage. Uh, in addition to this, that this uh, uh, band, uh, or I don't know if it's called band or, or another word, the, the proper word, but in general, the Duban uh, is uh, a unique. Uh, a team that came with a new idea uh, and also not traditional uh, Palestinian heritage. It's a modern uh, uh, dancing and modern uh, uh, music reflecting the Palestinian ident identity in a new way that can spread the, the political message for the Palestinian people to the, to, to the outside world. <laughs> Kuwait and Palestine are bound by common civilization and social aspects that are not restricted by language, but rather by the unity of the past, present and future. The Palestinian culture has been eternal and capable of confronting uneasy historic circumstances and the globalization of culture. Uh, there is a poet who, who came from, uh, also from Jerusalem, uh, will be uh, delivering a new poem uh, for Jerusalem and of course he's presenting a, a, a poem for, for Kuwait. Uh, as also kind of appreciation uh, for the state of Kuwait. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, there will be a political uh, a seminar or political lecture will be delivered by Dr. Saeed Barakat, member of the executive committee of the PLO. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, next Wednesday, there will be a, a fashion show, modern Palestinian fashion show. Uh, I'm here with my mom, Khulut Khouri. She is a Palestinian fashion designer. And we are here to share our handmade embroidery done in Bethlehem, Palestine. It is on many items, including dresses, purses, belts, and accessories. And we came to the Kuwait to, with our Arab neighbors to share all of this. An exhibition about Palestinian handicrafts was held on the sidelines of the event, displaying traditional jewellery and costumes, but with a modern touch. Every nation takes pride in its cultural heritage and tries to preserve and promote it. And this is the case today for the Palestinians, as the National Council for Culture, Arts and Letters hosted the Palestinian Cultural Days, a series of events that highlight the rich, colorful and artistic aspects of the Palestinian heritage, but with a modern twist. From the Desma Theatre, this is Sarah Glip reporting for the Week in 30 Minutes.
Next, Sarah Glove will take us through one of the most popular and loved celebrations of the Indian community. Indians in Kuwait.com organized their third annual mega community celebration for Diwali Mela 2014 under the patronage and attendance of the Ambassador of India to the State of Kuwait, His Excellency Sunil Jian. Bringing all the Indian communities in Kuwait together, the event marks Diwali also is well known as the Festival of Light, which spiritually symbolizes the victory of light over darkness, knowledge over ignorance, good over evil, and hope over despair. Let's watch. Indiansinkuwait.com held its much-awaited mega-community celebration entitled Diwali Mela 2014, a full-day event that brought all Indian associations together in a common platform to celebrate Diwali or the Festival of Lights, an ancient Hindu festival observed every year in autumn. Diwali is a big celebration in India. We are all Indians celebrate Diwali. It's a, a big celebration. So here, like we are celebrating this for the third time. Here, all Indian community is coming together in this, uh, for this celebration, and they are part of this celebration. Here, the main thing is like we are bringing uh, all people from in, uh, different part of India, like from North India, South India, West India, all coming together to for this celebration. And they have a lot of community performance, dance performance, cultural performance, all these things we are having here. The Pavali is the festival of lights. It's celebrated by uh, all communities and uh, uh, with the lighting of lamps, fireworks and crackers. So I think uh, on 23rd, if you see our uh, TVs all over the India, you'll find the... And of course on this occasion, uh, we all clean our houses, paint them, and children enjoy sweets, of course, and there's a very strong uh, spiritual side to it. This represents, it's a moonless night, and after 14 years of exile, Lord Ram returned to Ayodhya, that is to celebrate his coming home. So this is the significance of the festival. Various local and regional Indian associations participated in the event, which featured a variety of stalls displaying flavors from different parts of India and all kinds of games and activities for the whole family. We are glad to be a part of this event and uh, we are sponsoring some free tickets and uh, we've got some souvenirs given away and uh, especially I'm tapping those communities from Indian uh, we are offering them special prizes, uh, you know, special uh, uh, extra uh, luggage uh, when they travel. And we, we are giving some specialized things today in this Diwali event. And I wish all Indians a happy Diwali too. Us as the Murad Bahmani group via TikTok, we always uh, support all communities in Kuwait, regardless from where they are. We just support the Kuwaiti community, the Indian community. We support them to do you know, cultural events. That way we get closer to all communities in Kuwait. And it's a very excellent uh, event that they sponsor every year. And we try to be a part of it one way or the other every year. The event also featured Diwali Mitai competition, Rangoli, kids' fancy dress, Diwali lanterns or candle made by students from various Indian schools, a cultural fashion show and dance and artistic performances that guaranteed a fun-filled entertainment day for the entire family. Thousands of Indians from various walks of life have turned up to participate in one of their country's most popular and important holidays. As for the third year, IndiansInKuwait.com has organized their full-day mega-community event to celebrate Diwali, the Festival of Lights. From the Salmiya Indian Model School, this is Sarah Glub reporting for the Week in 30 Minutes. This brings us to the close of tonight's episode of the week in 30 minutes. We hope to see you again at the same time next week. Our highly dedicated team is constantly out on the field searching for reports 
that matter most to you. We look forward to receiving your feedback on the stories we received today. We're also ready to cover issues that you find interesting. So please email us your suggestions at moikuwaitnews at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at MOI Kuwait News and on Facebook at MOI Kuwait News. And of course, if you would like to see the reports we covered today, again, you can visit our YouTube channel at MOI Kuwait News. Have a good night, and we'll see you next week with more exclusive reports. Good night. <laughs>